Welcome to My Life, Tanya Applied with Rabbi Simon Jacobson, a journey into the deepest teachings of Torah and their application to our personal, emotional, and psychological lives. A good Giben Shtyar and a good Yontif going into Sukkis. We continue our journey in the life-changing Sefer Atanya. This program is made possible by Rena Lights LLC and is an honor and memory of Rabbi Yesuf Halevi Weinberg Olav HaShalom, Rabbi Moshe Pinchas HaKoyen Katz Olav HaShalom, and Rabbi Yael HaKoyen Khan Olav HaShalom. It's also in Schus and Merit of Rabbi Zev Yecheskel HaKoyen and Risha Katz, Le'edich Yomim V'Shanim Tevis for many long healthy years. So we began chapter 15, Pedic Tezvov, in Tanya, which discusses in a more elaborate and more in-depth fashion the level of the Benini. The Benini. Now that we've established that a Benini is someone, that paradox, that has a battle going on, the battle between the divine soul and the animal soul, and he cannot completely eliminate the animal soul what he can do is have self-mastery and control, which means that it shouldn't affect his thought, speech, and action. But we're talking here about human beings, and human beings are complex. There are many, many colors and shades and variations. And the Altareb is going to address many of these variations in addition to what we've already learned till now. And he does so brilliantly through a posik and the explanation of the Gemara in Chikiga, the Pesach in Malachi, V'shaftim v'ri'isem b'in tzadik l'roshe b'in eved alikim l'asher lo yavodim. That it's not a redundancy. Tzadik l'roshe is one distinction, and eved alikim is one who serves God, and one who doesn't serve is referring to the Benini. So there's no redundancy here, based on our discussion, that a Benini is, not like a tzadik is an eved havaya meaning he's, that's the shame, like he said, that's the shame, that's the shame at Toyar, that's his description. He's already become that, and that's a state, it's a state of being. Here we're talking about someone who's Eved Alekim, he's Eved Lashon Haven, not Eved Alekim. Eved means he's constantly making an effort to serve God because he's constantly battling his animal soul. So that explains the, that, that effort. But then we have to understand what about the second half, Loya Vodai. Till now, it was very clear that a Baini is the battle, the work that he does is, consists of a battle. He has to battle the animal soul, make sure it doesn't affect his thought, speech, and action. But in that itself, there are levels. And this leads us into the Loya Vodai. That there are two levels in the Baini itself, which of course each of these levels has many levels within them. The Eved Alekim, the Eved Alekim Ashalei Avade. A Roshe, he's definitely not. Because he doesn't allow the Nefesh is the animal soul, to affect his thought, speech, and action. Avul became Eine Roshe. Because Ki Eine Kiloi Ova Miyom of Shuma Veda Kala. No matter what level of Baini we're talking about, he's not in any way ever sinned. Even a, 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 a lenient sin. And on the positive, that's Surmara. And Vagam Kaim Kola Mitzvah Efshad al Kaim. And he's able and he performs all the mitzvahs that he's capable of performing. The Talmud Tata can Egad Kulam, which includes Talmud Tata, which corresponds to is equal to them all. The Lay Pasik Pumagisa does not allow his mouth to stop studying. However, with all these levels, and this is a tremendous level, yet, when we're talking about it, as we discussed the standard, when you're talking about serving God, remember, God is perfection. We can never be perfect. But, in that, but we have many, many levels to climb, and it's a constant journey. And here the Alter Rebbe is going to explain how this journey applies to everybody on every possible level. So that's, the, the, so that's his, that's his work. 
That's the, that's the Benini. However, however, here's where we get into the level of Le'a Vodai. Because you have a person that is Eina Eisa Shul This is one category. He's just not requiring a battle. Yes, oh, it's always a battle because there's an animal soul, of, but there's relatively speaking, it's not a battle, and he's going to explain in different ways why it's not such a battle. Meaning that, that the concept of Ovid Elakim, that he's constantly battling, meaning a constant effort, there are people where it's not that much of a constant effort. She'in Eisa Shumulchem Ima Yetzer Lenatzche, because there's an instance, there's a situation that his Yetzirah is not challenging him at all. To draw him away from study or worship. He doesn't have to fight it at all. Not everybody is the same level of a fight. And Al Rebbe gives now an example. Well, a few examples. The first one is going to be the nature of the very person. People are different to dispositions, different natures. There's some people more conducive to be able to not have to, the Yetzirah doesn't affect them as much. Not due to Avedah, not due to a battle, because that's their nature. Kugoyin shu masmid belimude betivoy mitel dosei. A person whose inherent nature is to study constantly. It's not because of Avedis Hashem. This is not to take away from his, from his, uh, from his work, but that's his nature. Why? Due to abundance of a certain serious temperament that's conducive to being analytical, to being cerebral. To being someone who's more focused on learning and study. That's his nature. Another, another aspect of a nature can be that it doesn't, this is the positive, and I say, hey, that's why he learns to likes to study. He doesn't say it here, but it could be a person who could study also mathematics. We'd also like it. Again, this is not to take away from his Aveda, but that's the situation. It's coming from his nature. But Tivi Mital Dose. Not just Betiva, he says, not just his nature, Mitel Dosi, from birth. It's inherent. Vechain and Surmarai also. Ainle Melchoma Betivis Noshim. He doesn't have to wrestle with a desire for women. Mipneshu Mitsunon Betiva. Because he's cold by nature, he's passionless, more detached, aloof. Mitsuna comes from the word sin, and actually, it's a Gemara that talks about um, the actual. Al Rebbe doesn't say the Gemara, but he says, but the Gemara says like this, just to mention it. In Sanhedrin, Lama Tespeiz, 39b, Achav Ish Mitsunan Haya. Achav was a cold person, cold blooded. So, this is again his nature which gives him that edge, but it's not coming from a Muhammad. It's his nature. And then he continues. In other taivas as well, and likewise with other worldly pleasures. He naturally, it's all betive again. See, betive tell dose, here is mitsunim betive, and again, tive, his nature is such that he lacks a feeling of enjoyment. Some people just don't have that indulgent, that, in, that pleasure element as others do. So you see here that due to the different temperaments and different personalities of people will also apply to the Baini part. Now, of course, he gets credit as a Baini because the bottom line is the animal soul still wants him to do to go against Tehra, go against God, God forbid. 
But it's not that such a war for him, or not a war at all, because his nature lends itself in this sense. So you have to con- you have to contrast that with someone who is hot blooded, or someone that does indulge and has that pleasure part to him much stronger, or someone who does not have that nature that he likes to study, he likes to he's a socialite, for example. And we're talking here by nature. So there's a distinction. And when you're talking about serving God, this has to be taken in consideration. So again, we're not taking away from anything that this person does. It just has to be recognized and qualified. And that's what the Alter Rebbe is doing. So what do we take from all of this? That in this case, by this type, these examples, remember he said, Kugain, these are examples, which suggests that there are many more examples. It's not going to cover every type of scenario. But we have enough here that encompasses a whole category of someone whose nature is more conducive, lends itself to do, to learn Teda, and to, to avoid uh, Avedis sins. And because of his nature is that way, Remember, earlier we learned that for a person in Pedic Yud Beis, chapter 12, for a Benini, how does he counter the force of the Yetzirah, the Nefesh Abamis? Is by contemplating in God's greatness. And as such, that, that contemplation leads to awakening emotions within him, which gives him that edge of Mayak Shal Talalev, that the divine, that the reflective mind where the divine soul rests controls and subdues the passionate impulses and reflexive impulses of the animal soul. But a person now, now we're talking about something he didn't address before. We're talking now that his nature lends itself. So he doesn't need as much. Ain't Sarach is going to call kach. Because to say altogether no contemplation, you can't say that. So call kach, meaning there is something, but he doesn't need it as much. For his faculty of cognition of Bina, to produce a sense of recognition. To give birth from from Binose Ruach Das, recognition. He does not need that that much. Because the Das in turn, as we learned in chapter, in chapter two, at the end of chapter 3, the Das is kashus, which takes Chochmah and Bina and creates a connection to that, a deep connection that gives birth to Midas, which is Yiddish Hashem B'Mechei, the reverence of God in his mind, to protect him and hold him back, to refrain from transgressing any of the prohibitions. And the same thing, that's Yiris Hashem. Then Va'avis Hashem, Beliboy, the same thing, he does not need as much the contemplation to bring that reverence, and also Va'avis Hashem, the love of God in his heart, Ledovke by became a mitzvah, to attach himself and connect to God through the observance of the positive mitzvahs. The Talmud Tehidah connected to and he brings again. You could ask, why does he mention Talmud Tehidah connected to Kula? Not only here earlier, it just emphasizes, you can explain, because here you have one mitzvah that, that, that is equal to them all, and that was what we talked earlier about someone who learns Tehidah all day. So you have that going for him, especially here we're talking about someone who learns, by nature he learns. So he doesn't need it as much coming from the, his bonus and godless Hashem as somebody who doesn't have that nature. So, as a result of that, as a result of that, he doesn't need that contemplation. But at the end of the day, he does need to feel for it. He needs to connect to it. Because remember, we're talking about Itaka as a nature that is more cold and aloof and not so pleasure-driven. Pleasure, pleasure driven. A nature that's more somber, more serious, conducive to learning. But we're talking about someone that is committed 
to his nefesh alikis. And the nefesh abamis is not completely disappeared. It's just that he has this extra edge because of his nature. So he doesn't need this contemplation as much. But he does need to feel a connection to God. So where's that connection coming from? You're saying, okay, he has a natural tendency to learn Tate. He has also he doesn't have as much distractions by his Yetzirah. So Elah says the Alter Rebbe, For him it's enough to avoid the allure of these negative behavior and to be driven toward the positive. It's enough the Ava Mishnah is the hidden or dormant love, which has found the heart of all Israel, Shenikru Eve Shmei, who are called lovers of his name, and Tehillim Samach Tes Lamed 6937. So you do need that. So the Altareb is now combining several factors here that are at work. He already mentioned Ava Mishnah back in the earlier chapters on Bain 12 and 13. And it lies there dormantly. You can't say it doesn't have any effect. But it is ultimately dormant. That's why you need his bonus. But here, the contemplation that comes and, and brings the Moyach Shalta Alev and also uses some of that Ava Mesoteris that's there in the, back, in the background. But here, we're talking about someone who doesn't need so much contemplation because his nature lends itself to, not, to the Yetzirah to not be that strong. And lends itself toward learning his nature. So he has the Ava Mesoteris, which lies within him. And instead of having to use so much these Bananus and Godless Hashem, his natural tendencies, plus this Ava Mesoteris, is enough. Enough to keep him a Benini, to control and keep at bay the thought, speech, and action shouldn't follow the Nefesh Abamis's interests. This type of personality. That's why it's called Lo Yavadi. It's not called a Revit at all. So firstly, it's not called a Revit because it's his nature. But what about this Ava Musuteris that is an Ava within him? But that's not due to him. That's not due to his effort. It was not brought out by him, brought about by him nor is in any way of a, a way his achievement. Eli Yerusha Seinu, Mave Seinu, Leklal Yisrael. Rather, it's an inheritance from the patriarchs to the whole of Israel. Okamoshi is bar common, as we shall learn later in chapters 18 and 44. I know we've learned this already, we're going over it again in more depth. So you have your whole personality type. And all the factors, to sum up, his nature is to study. Because his nature is more of a serious one. His nature is not that indulgent because he's more cold, more cold blooded, more detached. And he's not a pleasure seeker by nature. In addition to that, he has the Ava Mesoteris that lies dormant within him. So he doesn't need as much as Bonanus. That alone is enough to keep him, at, to keep the Yetzirah from anti, and from. Act, from actualizing in thought, speech, and action. And that's why they avoid it, because it's not due to him. Now, why doesn't al Rebbe emphasize that it's his nature? That's why it's not due to him. That has to be understood. You know, why is he just saying here, talking about the Ava? Could be because it's self-understood that it's nature. So, of course, it's nature. Then it's not his avoid. Or you could say there is something there because he is doing the study and he's... And he's not fo- following his Yetzirah, but it's his nature. Here, the Ava is more of a, his love to God, but it's not his. It's like given, he was given a gift, an inheritance, to be exact, a Yerusha. So that's one scenario. Now he's going to give us another scenario. He's giving us another scenario, and that is somebody who's not necessarily by nature, we're talking about inherent nature, 
a studier of Torah, or the other elements that we spoke is by nature doesn't follow certain pleasures. Here is somebody who's trained himself, maybe cultural, became his habit. And we see this very, very often and very common. People growing up in a firm environment, <coughs> it may not be through their work, they just grew up in a certain environment that's not culturally acceptable. There are people who say, I can't eat certain things, not because of Aveda, it's just repulsive to me. I grew up in an environment where we don't have that. So he says, it gives now this example. Af me continues with this scenario now. Af me. Well, I should <laughs> okay, um, missed a word. The chain. And so too, the same category of loya vode applies to another type of person. Af me she a masmid bilumu de betive. It's not someone who doesn't have a natural disposition to study all the time, like the first category we just spoke about, the first personality. But he's nevertheless trained himself to study with extreme persistence. And this has become normal for him, his second nature. Become Tavasheni is the expression. So here we have a different factor. It's his habit. It's his persistence. He's developed a habitual connection to learning Tera. So here too, Dailei Ba'ava Musutera Zu. In this case as well, the Ava Musutera, the hidden dormant love, is enough to keep the Yetzirah from affecting the Nefesh Abamis from affecting his thought, speech, and action. Without any extra effort. So that would also be going in the category of Loya Vodeh. Now the Altareb is not coming to take away credit and to in any way minimize people's commitment to Torah and Mitzvahs. We know we live in a world, especially in Golis, that there are many, many challenges. And even if a person has a nature that is conducive to learning and is not that, then is more cold blooded, that so much pleasure seeker or pleasure oriented, or in this case, somebody who's culturally or by habit or by nature has become committed. So you know what? We're not taking, taking away from the mere fact that he is doing Taylor Mitzvahs. Someone grew up in a Frum home. And his nature is to wake up five o'clock in the morning and go to the mikveh and then go to Davin and learn and give zdokeh. Even if it's coming naturally and naturally either his nature is that way or he's developed this habit. But it's a good habit. Bottom line, he's fulfilling Tehidah Mitzvahs. What do you want him to do? So al is not trying to in any way minimize that. But he's categorizing. The Pesach says, lo yavodeh. It's the difference between Eved Elikim and Le'avodai. What's Le'avodai? It doesn't mean like a Rosha. He's not serving. He's transgressing. It means what he's doing is not taking as much effort. And what the Ebrister really wants is Avodai. Now, even a person like that should become an Eved Elikim. That's the goal. That's why the al is bringing it. Not, God forbid, to minimize it, but to, to, to state, to, to observe, to make the observation and make it very clear what level this is. And it's critical, because imagine you didn't say that. If you knew a person can do a lot more, you say, listen, he's doing it by habit, he's doing it by regilis, tavasheni, or his nature is that way. You're actually depriving him from reaching excellence, because you know he can push himself to do more. We're not talking about becoming a tzaddik. That, even there, the Alter Rebbe said in the previous chapter, that you have to make an attempt to become a tzaddik. And, then, and God will do what he does. Maybe he'll send in the as we learned in the previous chapter. But here we're talking about something that, that, that requires a gift from above. Here we're talking about something we can push you to do more. So the Alter Rebbe is basing on the Posik that there's a difference between that the Torah is telling us you can do more. Because what you're doing is coming from nature or it's coming from second nature. 
That's the kavana here. To lift us up like a good coach that pushes someone to their limits to reach higher, high, greater heights. And that's what the Alter Rebbe says right away. He says, so this is here, Gilatzme. He's accustomed himself. Trained himself. But here, so there, the Av Mishnah is enough. But there is a way for him to reach the level of Eved Elikim. And that's what the Alter Rebbe adds. Elim Kain reits a lil mid yesim mirigulose. Unless he wants to study more than he is accustomed. And that will take effort. So if he's accustomed to learning like every morning, 15 minutes, and he does something beyond that, and we'll soon learn the details of that from the same Gemara and Chigike that's based on this Pasuk of Eved Alekim Vilei Avodai, then he actually goes, moves from Lei Avodai to Eved Alekim. But this is a constant effort. Like we said before, Eved Loshen Heve. He's not reached a destination, he's traveling. So now we've learned that in the Bainani there's the two levels. There's the person who is const- who's, who's actually actively struggling and actively contemplating and all the active things that are necessary is called Aveda. And then there are scenarios where the Aveda is either less or almost not, you don't need that Muhammad to that extent as he explained. But now the next section is going to continue and speak about Ubize Yuvan. We're going to understand from this the Gemara, the, the Gemara that is the Chigiga, Tazbeis, that discusses Eved Alekim Ashalei The Gemara actually gives an example for it. But that will leave for the next year as we continue this discussion of the different levels of Abayni. What we take away from this is the high standards, the expectations. And coming from a loving place, Yehide Makirai, as the Alter Rebbe writes in his introduction, shouldn't be seen, as I said, minimized. On the contrary, it's pushing us to reach what we're capable of. And this is all the Baini, Midas Koladam, Bacharel Koladam Yimshech. It's a Baini. And a Baini can reach these greatest and highest levels. That's what the Alter Rebbe is eager to convey to us. So with this we shall conclude this shir. Everyone have a very freilich and sukkis. Zman sim chaseinu. The Yismach Hashem b'maisov, Yismach Yisrael b'esov. Joined together. Simch is paid together. So it helps us go out of our own very limitations. Going out of the gilus. Should be a simch dik year for everyone. A good geben yor. Due to the Yom Tevim being on Sundays, so this week and next, it will be both the classes are Thursday, 9.30 p.m. instead of the regular Matzai Shabbos at 10 p.m. After Yontav, we shall resume the regular schedule. A good Geben Shdiot. And tanyaapplied.com as we can find these on all previous programs. This has been My Life, Tanya Applied with Rabbi Simon Jacobson. Please join us again next week. Visit chasidasapply.com for archived classes and more resources.